Hello everyone, sorry for a small technical problem. Uh, so I'm Eric Leblanc, Guise Pelango, which is just here, uh, was supposed to talk too, but we decided that just one accent, which is a French one for me, would be enough, so we won't have uh, the right to listen to the Italian accent, because we only have uh, 25 minutes, so just one accent is enough. Um, so I'm going to talk about Suricatai, so it's more a user space presentation of, of one people, of one guy, of some guy which are using. Uh, Linux on a Linux capture. So what is Suricata? Suricata is an intrusion, detec uh, intrusion detection system or int uh, intrusion prevention system. So basically we could see it as uh, something that is sniffing the traffic and that is making an analysis of the traffic and looking for some pattern which are known as being some bad patterns. Um, Suricata is uh, one of uh, open source uh, IDS available on network IDS available on the market. Uh, it's a GPL v2 and uh, it, uh, it is uh, funded and, uh, by some uh, by a consortium. Uh, there is a foundation which is OASF, which is um, um, paying for the development of uh, of a foundation of a of the software, sorry. You can find more information about OASF on the website and let you check if you want. So what is uh, Suricata in terms of software? Um, it's, uh, it's something that is capturing the packet on the network and um, it's making an analysis. The first analysis is that it got some uh, protocol recognition. So you will be able to detect, if you, for example, if you got HTTP on non-standard port, so this is the protocol recognition part. And then, once the protocol is recognized, it will proceed to a protocol analysis, which means that you will be able to extract some field from the request. And then, you will be able to use these fields to, to filter, to, to make some filtering, and to write some signatures that will be, help you to detect uh, some uh, abnormal behavior on the network. Uh, this is one part of uh, protocol handling. The second part is uh, the transaction logging. So, for example, if you got some HTTP request on your network, we will be able to log this transaction request in uh, an extensible JSON format, which will, which will, then you will be able to put that in something like Elasticsearch or Splunk, and then you will be able to build some dashboard on all the pro protocol transactions. Uh, due to the fact that Suricata is able to understand uh, the protocol exchange, we are able to extract files. For example, we can extract files from HTTP, SMTP, and store them on the disk. So that way you can do some malware uh, analysis. For example, you see that you've got an executable on the network, which is fetched by a HTTP request. But in that case, you can write a signature that will say, if I see an executable on the network, then I want to store it on disk. Then you store it on disk, and then you can feed uh, this, uh, this data to, uh, your, uh, to, uh, to a, a malware analysis uh, framework or things like that. Um, we also have uh, TLS on check analysis, so we can uh, analyze the start of the negotiation, uh, TLS negotiation to extract information about that, so for example, like the subject DN or the issuer DN in certificate. And, um, all that to say that we, we are doing some quite intensive thing inside Suricata when we are looking for information uh, on the network. And we are really intensive because we even are able to do some Lua scripting where you can uh, ask for some element in the, in the network traffic and then you can do some computation in Lua, in Lua script to, de to determine whether or not the behavior is suspect. On the capture side, we support a lot of uh, acceleration method, support things like uh, hardware acceleration card, like NDES, Napatec. Uh, there is an experimental support for CUDA, for, for GPU acceleration. And we've got uh, support for alternate capture method like PFRing or NetMap. So we've got two parts. We've got the IDS part. In that case, we are sniffing the network. Here we support the standard backup, we support IF packet for on Linux. I will get back into the, in the to details on that later. And then we have, uh, for example, NetMap or NFLog, which can be used too. 
an LPS mode will support most of the uh, fire existing firewall. As, a level, as layer 3 with NFQ or IPFW, uh, or at level 2 with IF packet. And we can also do a classical offline analysis. In that case, we just read some PCAP. Um, one of the big sports uh, in the, on, in, on the attack side is to try to escape to IDS. Because if you es escape the IDS, if you escape the detection, in that case, you can make your attack silently. Then if, you, if your attack is silent, but in that case, you can stay in place and start to exfiltrate some data from the network. So it's really easy. And it's uh, something which is already provided by uh, attack kit or by tools like uh, uh, Metasploit, where you can just say, I want to use this kind of evasion against uh, the, the IDS. So, so people get unnoticed when they attack. So as we say, as, as we, the signature uh, based IDS, they rely on the packet, con packet content. So the idea of the attacker is mainly to change the content which is seen by the IDS compared to the one which is seen by the host. For example, a simple attack is to lower the TTL of some packet, so they get dropped before they reach the host. And on the IDS, we, can, we cannot differentiate between the packet which are really reached the host and the one we are dead before. Another attack is the one which is based on the operating system. Uh, for example, if you take TCP, uh, the RFC is not complete, and there is some border uh, case where uh, every uh, operating system has a different implementation of, um, of the which data are analyzed by the host. For example, uh, if you got a TCP overlapping fragment, then in that case, uh, on Linux, I think that the first seen data are used, and on Windows, it's the different uh, way, so we can have different content for the same, exact same flow as seen from the host, which is uh, 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 getting a packet. Uh, another attack which exists, it's uh, even more tricky, is the application-based evasion. For example, if you take two different uh, web servers, and if you pass them uh, a request with twice the same argument, like uh, A equal one uh, and E equal two, then you don't know which value will be used by the web server. Maybe it's uh, I equal one, maybe it's I equal two, or even in some case, you've got an array which is made with a, uh, a two-dimensional array which is made in that case. So that gets really complicated to know what is going on. All that to say, we really need to, in the IDS, to be able to personalize uh, the target that we want to protect. For example, if we have got one network, uh, we need to, to say that this part of the network is Linux, this part of the network is Windows. And so doing that, we are able to reconstruct the traffic the exact same way it is seen by the target host. So, uh, in Suricata, we can do that on the operating system type. So we can say this uh, IP is a Windows, this IP is a Linux. And we can also do that on the HTTP server side. For example, we can say this is an IES server and this is an Apache server. The work which is done by... Uh, Yes, the work which, which is done by Suricata is almost exactly the same as the one which is done by the operating system. So we got the individual IP packet, then we reconstruct TCP, and then when, once TCP is pa packet are reconstructed, then we can we will reconstruct the stream. So exactly the same stream that is received when you do a read on a TCP socket or a write on a TCP socket. And the match that we mostly do will be on this reconstructed stream. So, for example, we will avoid something stupid like if you do a match on TCP, for example, if you want to match on download, then you could have an attacker that is putting down here and load here, and then you miss the download attack. So we really need to work on the stream. And as I said before, the stream needs to be reconstructed the same way it is done on the operating system. So that's why we need to have a um, 
uh, the personality to be taken into account, and we, ca we cannot rely on what is done by the host running Suricata, because we need to do exactly the same as the operating system, which is running on the host. And then we are doing something uh, uh, more, which is to normalize the data, for example, if we know that it is HTTP, then in that case we, we are able to present, to present uh, the method, the URI, URI, to the user in a normalized way. So a bit about performances. So as I pointed out, uh, Suricata is really CPU intensive. And for example, you can, uh, this is a typical signature where you say, I want to match on the HTTP method, so you extract the HTTP method. I want to match on the HTTP host, so you parse once again the header, then you parse the content. And in the content, for example, something that we are doing on the HTTP server side, when you, re you receive something, is that we will be, we will um, dynamically uh, un unzip or uh, uncompress the data which often are really sent compressed by the, the web server, and in that case, you don't see the content. So we are doing a lot of things. So as you can guess, um, it will be really CPU intensive. And one other point, for example, if I was working before uh, in the firewall area, it's completely different because uh, we need to inspect everything. So when we see a traffic, we have to inspect the traffic on all the signatures available. And currently, we've got between um, 15,000 and 30,000 different signatures that we need to inspect for each packet. So as you can guess, if we are doing that um, without any optimization, we are just dead, and even an old, old and slow network will, not be, uh, um, will be too much for us. So what we are doing is that we got some pre-filtering which is made, we are, made, we are doing some categorization, then we also use uh, some uh, multiple uh, pattern matching algorithm like uh, AOCORASIC to go faster and to just get to a sub-selection of the signatures and then we inspect this signature. Uh, multi-pattern matching is really efficient, uh, so we can, instead of inspecting, for example, uh, a few thousand signatures, we just inspect a few one. Uh, so this is just uh, a small output. So this is a link, uh, a box which is running, I think, something like three or four gigabytes per second. And you see that we got 16 CPU, which is uh, which are quite used, and the load is around uh, eight. So this is running, I think, something like uh, 15,000 signature. If we look at uh, perf, then we see that oh, almost not readable. We got more 60, more, around 65% is uh, used in the main function, which is the function which is looking into the signature. So the capture on the other side is not taking a lot. We got just a few percent which are used. So due to the CPU intensive side of Suricata, we just have uh, around from 150 to 500 megabytes per second per core. So we need to scale. So to scale, we can use uh, RSS, or we can um, when we need to split the load among different CPU. So let's get back into Linux. So F packet, I think, no need to mention what it is uh, in, that, uh, in that area. Um, one, one thing that we are using in F packet is the recently introduced by David Miller um, a fan out mode, where you can uh, load balance on multiple sockets one a single interface. So we are using, for example, the flow of a CPU uh, based load balancing, and we also can use the RSS based uh, load balancing. And a typical setup of Suricata will look like that. Uh, you've got the Ethernet card, and then you've got the load balancing, which is done by flow on the Ethernet card, and then you've got the different uh, um, receive queue. And for each reaches queue, we pin one, uh, one thread which is analyzing all the traffic for, for the flow, and we do that, that for, each, uh, for each thread. And then we got some management thread but are not uh, displayed. Um, recently, I found out the option which is the rollover option. So at first, I was like, wow, that's great. Because we got a burst issue, as we don't know how much time a packet. Uh, will take to be passed, so it's really easy in the Suricata to fill uh, the ring buffer, 
And um, by feeling a buffer, we start to lose packet. If we start to lose packet, we're, lo we're losing in accuracy because we cannot reconstruct the stream really easily. So the rollover ID, which is when a ring buffer is full, I switch the packet to the next ring buffer, was looking like a great idea at first. So I implement rollover, and then it was catastrophic. So uh, here you've got, uh, in fact, it's catastrophic in terms of accuracy. If you look at the drop, here you've got a few drop on the normal mode. If you activate rollover, then you don't have any drop. So that's quite good on the drop size. But if you look at the accuracy, what do you have? You've got here the number of alerts. So this is you, uh, the, the, pat the pattern matching is working correctly on this one. But if you look at the, roll, uh, at the implementation with rollover, then you see that we got a decrease in the number of alerts. So we are not able to match. We get more packets, but we are not able to match correctly on the, on the pattern. We are not able to correctly do the pattern matching. So there is something strange here. But in fact, the problem is linked to the fact that in rollover, we can have uh, unordered packet regarding to one stream. For example, if you got one stream, we start to accumulate packet on one ring buffer, then the ring buffer gets full, so the rest of the stream reach the second ring buffer. So the way on Suricata side, we will start to analyze the second ring buffer before we analyze the start of the stream. So we uh, analyze the middle of the stream before analyzing the beginning of the stream at first. So this completely mess up the, st the streaming engine. So rollover is finally is not completely not a solution for Suricata. Um, we've got an NFQ uh, in IPS mode. There is um, an, uh, an implementation of NFQ in Suricata. So basically, we can use uh, NFTable, Q, and then Suricata is listening on Q number zero. We can do that in NFTable or IPTable. So basically, for the one who don't know, NFQ is just, we've got a queue, we send a message to NFNet link on, on the other side, where uh, we're getting a packet and we're sending a verdict, like accept or drop. Uh, and if you have some issue reg regarding performance, uh, so it's not possible to, to scale when you got a lot of messages per second. So you can be multi queue and it up a bit. So that's why we may have interest into uh, not offloading, but into shunting the traffic uh, and, uh, when we see something, some characteristic. So uh, there is one thing which is uh, the fact that uh, if you look at uh, real traffic, most attacks are coming at the beginning of a TCP session because the, in, the people can't afford or cannot maybe possibly in, um, uh, to make multiple requests before sending the attack. For example, you've got a lot of protocols which are mono requests, so in that case you just always send the request, at the attack at the beginning. So, there is something in uh, Suricata which allows you to define a limit where you will inspect the, tra the traffic till a certain uh, depth in the streaming. So by doing this, we manage to lower the load on Suricata and um, catch almost all the attacks because all the attacks occur before the stream assembly depth. So uh, what we call offloading, which is in fact shunting, is that if, if all the packets after stream def, we are not doing a real analysis on them, so we can just skip them. So we've introduced one uh, stream of loading option that we can set to yes in the configuration file. And using this option, we can just set to, we can find a way to set to the kernel that we will not want the packet uh, after this uh, stream def. Um, so what we have done in Suricata is we had a callback function. So when a capture method is registering himself, now it can say, I've got a callback function. I've got a callback function. And this callback function will be called when the stream def is reached. So we have done that with uh, NF for NFQ. So for NFQ, that's quite simple because we would just simply put a mark on the packet that will uh, tell us that this mark uh, will be used then by the uh, NFTable or IPTable rule set to simply skip the packet and stop sending it to the queue. 
So we, the, uh, the function is super simple. It set the mark, and then when we, do, we issue the verdict, we add the mark to the packet. So, for example, an implementation could, uh, could be that one. You got the standard uh, forward chain in, a, in an NF table, where you just filter the packet going through the box, and then you got your usual rule set here. And then you add, after the initial rule set, you add the IPS rule set, where you just say, um, I want to put back the mark which is on the connection tracking to the mark on the firewall. If the mark is one, then I will accept the packet. If not, then in that case, I will send the packet to the queue number zero. Um, there is a second chain, which is the reverse. This one will uh, take the packet mark and set it to the connection tracking mark. So if the verdict put a mark, then the mark would be saved in this one. So doing that, we managed to propagate the mark to all the packets of a single connection. So once Suricata has put one mark on the packet, all packet, packet belonging to the same connection will have the same mark. So if we're looking at a local testing, we see that with NFQ enable on a loopback, so a test on loopback with a high perf, we've got something like uh, 700 megabytes per second. So marketing time, if you enable offloading, then in that case, we switch to a 63 uh, gigabyte per second. Yes, routing without NFU is far more, fa far more faster, uh, really faster than uh, sending packet to uh, user space. Mm. Next thing which is, uh, which is interesting is that there is a lot of traffic we don't care about. For example, the Netflix traffic can be really intensive and we don't want to analyze it because we should not have malware inside uh, Netflix traffic or, or some selected traffic. So what we have added to Suricata is a new thing, which is uh, to be able to write some signatures. And then this signature, we use them to say, if this match, then in that case, we ignore this traffic. So we can do that with the uh, offload uh, option. So for example, we write one standard signature. So it's HTTP and the content netdevconf.org is inside, then in the, in, the, in the HTTP host. So in that case, we offload. And this way, uh, as soon as we see that the traffic is coming from, um, is, is, a, is a request to the netdevconf, then we, we offload the traffic, we don't make uh, an analysis of it. Uh, so it's, it's for us a uh, beginning because we um, currently are thinking about adding uh, that mechanism of uh, shunting of loading to other capture method like a uh, packet. Maybe we could f also think about signaling open this switch, signaling some custom hardware. So as soon as we detect something that we don't want, we could go to the kernel, we could go to the hardware to tell to this part that we don't want the traffic. There is some constraint uh, linked with the system. We need to be fast because uh, we possibly we can have some few thousand updates per second. Um, the, so we got a huge amount of things that we, we could monitor and we need to be able to change them fast. So there is some deep in, 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 implication between uh, Suricata and Linux. Uh, this uh, shunting of loading technique is looking really promising. Um, uh, and we need to, to explore it. So, question? Time, if you want. On the first cat of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the conference, I'm really happy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.